York Managing Director and Founder of Grey Matters Business Advisory, and he has coached over 500 senior executives and leaders worldwide, and has been, been engaged by several major infrastructure projects in Sydney and Melbourne, and a broad range of small to medium sized enterprises. And he currently sits on the boards of seven diverse private companies in Victoria and New South Wales. He has well over 7,000 hours of business board and personal coaching across a range of industries and business leaders at all levels, and a long list of referees willing to attest to his approach and achievements. Please welcome Andy. Thanks, Rob. Um, very embarrassing, very humbling. Introduction. Don't know why I wrote it. No, <laughs> <laughs> nice to hear replay back. Sounds good. I'm happy to play after after that. Actually, on reflection. So, look, a um, couple of things uh, to kick it off. Uh, Stephen, um, welcome to the um, the international side of things. You can see we're embracing the latest and greatest in, in everything here, sort of thing. We've cobbled together two uh, two whiteboards. Uh, in the absence of having uh, a one, one singular one. But uh, I'm going to be doing some stuff here today. Uh, I'm trying to share with you a little bit about um, the, the power of coaching. Uh, and it's helping you understand why you might embrace and why you might use coaching. And I want to try and take you on a bit of a journey and, and show you what coaching is about. Uh, and I'm going to maybe demonstrate a few of the different coaching techniques so you, you can sort of... Uh, understand it. So I'm going to be using the whiteboard uh, at one stage just to draw a diagram um, and, and show you where coaching fits in relation to some of the other different uh, things that are often confused or uh, muddled up with coaching. The So the advisory board piece today doesn't really come into it, so it's, uh, yeah, this, it is purely about coaching today. Uh, it will be interactive, as you'll see, um, and certainly uh, hopefully a little bit of fun as we go along the journey. To kick it off, just trying to get a bit of an understanding of the room, so I'll have you sort of modify what we do today based on where people are at with this topic. But who's actually had experience of being coached in a, in a, in a professional, maybe even a life sort of sense, not, not in a sporting sense, but who's actually had a coach or been coached in their, their career as such? Okay, so more than half the room, fantastic. Okay. Um, for the couple of people that did, I know, Pete, you and I spoke about it. For a couple of people that did, what was, what was a couple of the benefits you got out of, out of the coaching? I'm being a recipient of it. Yeah. Okay, put your hand up, Dave. Knowledge. Knowledge, okay, got some knowledge from the coach, yep. What else? Sorry? Accountability. Yeah, accountability, it's always a good one, yeah. Being accountable to a, sort of a third person, yeah, we'll talk a bit about that, yeah. Objectivity. Objectivity. Yeah, so a different, a different point of view, someone who can sort of give you a uh, help with a different view anyway and do it that way. Anyone else? Challenge from your assumptions. Yeah, someone challenges. Yeah, someone, someone to actually to rock your boat a little bit, so they make you feel a bit of discomfort and hopefully get a better result out of it. Uh, Richard, have you? Yeah, measurement. Measurement, okay. How do you talk to measurement? Uh, make you understand where I'm going through what my goal should be. Measurement. Okay, so helping with the clarity of goals. Yeah, fantastic. So I guess breaking that down and throwing it up into the room, what is coaching? What, what do people think coaching is? You know, it's just in its rawest single sentence definition. Sharing knowledge and experience. Sorry? Sharing knowledge Sharing and experience. Yes. Sharing? Insight. Insight? Yep. Empathy. Empathy. So there's some of the characteristics of it, but, but what actually is coaching, do you feel? Helping someone to become better. Helping someone to become better, yeah. So it's a giving process for coaches. Is, is giving is helping, yep. So achieving your personal best. And that's achieve, helping you achieve your personal best, yep. Facilitating your growth as a person. <coughs> Sorry, Lockie, you're not. Facilitating your growth as a person. Yeah, yeah. helping facilitate your growth as a person, yep. One more. Guiding. Guiding? So a sense of guiding, all those sorts of things, yeah. One of the, one of the, um, the foundational pieces of coaching, we didn't quite, quite come out of what we're talking about there, is Coaching is about starting, uh, the, the basic assumption is with coaching that the answer lies within the coachee, the person you coach. And, and you as the coach help them access that answer or that solution or, or that, that change in thinking. So you're there, as some kind of said, facilitate. I mean, there's the accountability piece as well that we mentioned sort of thing. And that's, that's the basic premise of coaching. What I thought I'd do, just to sort of, just to get us in a little bit of a... Um, a mood gets all together. 
I thought I'd invite someone down here. We've got two chairs. And I thought I'd just for 10 minutes just demonstrate um, just a, really, a couple of really basic principles of coaching for someone. Um, if someone would be bold enough uh, to come down here and do it. A couple of things. Um, don't make it personal. Um, as in, coaching is always confidential, but we don't have other 40 people in the room. So you don't want to hear them <laughs> share with them. It's got to be real. It's got to be something on your mind. It's not too complicated sort of thing. So would someone like to come down here and we'll just have a little session here and we'll just demonstrate, just show a little bit about coaching some of the techniques and then we'll break it down on the board. Kurt and Andy. What's that? Grab that chair there. So, just here, so I'll just grab a notepad if that's okay. Um, Rob, can you just, just uh, time wise? Sure. Turn the video off. Do it this way. Um, is it okay if I pick up a note while we talk? This is sort of yeah. collected. So, understanding normally, and the normal thing about coaching is 100% confidential between you and I, and, and my role is just to help you get thinking. Yep. Does that yeah. help yeah. us understand what it's about? Yeah. So, Andy, what's on your mind? Andy or Andrew? Andrew. Andrew. Andy. Andy. <laughs> Andy um, dealing with clients is probably the big one at the moment yeah. with regards to clients trying to drive down a price. Okay, so. So the actual so the process. Right. So what, what sort of clients are we talking about here? So a lot of our clients from uh, education, mm -hmm. uh, across not for profits, uh, healthcare, and then we also have corporate clients mm -hmm. as well. So probably both try and drive a price, yeah. um, but for very different reasons. Okay. Yeah. And, and what's the conflicting part of them driving the price down for you? That we offer a really specialised service, yep. um, and we have, we feel that we get value for what we do. So yep. why should we be reducing the, the cost given what we can or we believe we can deliver? Okay, so it's, so what I'm hearing you say is your challenge is to how you actually market the benefit you're giving and the value you're giving, yeah. so sort the of thing so you can maintain your pricing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that a fair encapsulation? Yeah, what you, yeah, okay. So at the moment then, how much pain is it giving you in the business? Probably not so much pain as probably stocks is growing and probably feeling as much as we possibly can. Okay, yeah. So there's a commercial aspect. Yeah, sorry, it's commercial as much as anything. And then I've got, um, they're looking at being able to pass the information to the people who work for right? in terms of allowing them the ability to be able to have those negotiations rather than always being me. Oh, okay. And so for you personally, how much is it weighing on your mind? I would say it weighs hugely on the mind, but it would certainly be something that would make my life easier and allow me to focus on other things. Yeah, okay, and that's my next question, yeah. I suppose, is yeah, if you're able to solve or resolve or get some progress on this, what would that give you? More time to focus on, on other things and um, it also allow the consultants to grow more and the consultants grow more than they allow us to grow the Business more, and then that also allows us to find more people. Okay, so it's that fine. So it's that very positive cycle yeah. from doing it that way. So if we, can, if we can make some progress on that, it's going to unlock a whole lot of value for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So up, up till now, and what have you tried, and what have you learned about this problem? Look, it's been very been doing this for twenty three years, mm -hmm. and it's always been the problem. Doesn't matter where you work, um, people try and drive the value down. Quite often, don't see. The value or the amount of work that actually goes into uh, <coughs> providing the, the right candidates. They think there's a, I think sometimes think there's a tree in the back, backyard, you can't pick the candidate off and yep. bring it out, but there's actually a lot of work that goes into understanding <coughs> the candidates. So um, being able to, to get that across shortly and succinctly, <coughs> and, and say being able to do it in a way that you can give a process to the consultant so that I mean, I've, I've done it. A few times over three, three years, um, and I'm pretty confident in doing it, but it's being able to pass that on to the, okay. the consultant. So, so, part of it is actually being part of the actual thing is to be able to educate and skill up yeah. the rest of your team so they can successfully explain the benefits and validate the pricing. So, it's not yeah. so much about yeah. you doing it anymore. Yeah. yeah, so has that then become more of a 
a training sort of issue for you? Yeah, it's, a, it's a training. You know, it's probably, you know, it's probably more coaching animal rather than yeah. training. Like the training, you can get the training done, but until yeah. they actually sit down and go through, and every situation will be different. So mm-hmm. it's knowing which leader to pull, when to pull it, and doing enough of the background information in terms of the questioning around where they're focused at and why they need the service yep. to be able to work that out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the more of the, the closer definition to what, what's yeah. really on your mind. Yeah. Yeah. And what have you tried so far? Uh, there's consultants. There's external, there's we've sort of had external yeah. coaching yeah. in terms of in training slash coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, me doing training, yeah. listening to me <coughs> do it, me listening to them do it, mm-hmm. letting me sort of working through, mm-hmm. knowing that they've always got the backup plan and look like we had the authority to make a decision on that. I don't need to ask them to get in trouble. Mm-hmm. I don't need to ask my direct point or yeah. what have you. Um, getting into role play. So there's <coughs> different different options there and things we've, we've tried and that they're getting better but that and it's probably not the right word. They don't have a whole lot of experience in doing it and they don't have this business knowledge in terms of how everything works together to always make that call. Okay. <coughs> Is it, at this stage now you think you feel that they should have actually grasped it? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Like, to be honest, I think we'll come up with different problems that I haven't dealt with in the last 23 years. I don't think they'll ever fully grasp it from a they'll know exactly what it is, but it's having it's almost having the confidence that it's okay not to know and we know what the process is, how we need to get there. So a lot of it probably comes down to that confidence and having the having the conversation. I think sometimes the information's there. It's just A, have I got the confidence to be able to do it? B, have I got the confidence to get it wrong? Okay. A bit, and have I got, do I feel like I've got the space to fail? What if I get it? Yeah. What if I get it wrong? So, so as we're sort of narrowing it down there from, from training down to maybe just a confidence level about what my authority is, what's coming up for you in terms of what you, your next steps are? I think a lot of it is giving them more opportunity to, to fail so they can go further mm-hmm. and getting it wrong. And look, we work in recruitment, so mm-hmm. no one's going to die in terms of what we do, and it's not going to ever be that bad, and you can always take, take it back. Um, and letting them know that it's safe. If I was, I think sometimes they know that it's safe to fail, but that doesn't necessarily fix the I'm happy failing. Knowing, I think knowing you're happy to fail and being happy to fail are two quite different different things. So but again, what's coming up for me is it's more mindset than skill set. Yeah. 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 Um, fair enough. So what else could you try that you haven't tried up until now? Um, I think a lot of it's letting them do it. Mm-hmm. You need, I think you can do it in mock situations. You can do small mock situations and have them do it, but a lot of it's just letting them work through it. And maybe, and one of the things we will do before, say they make the call, is sit down and have how, how we how we deal with some questions you can ask, what are you expecting the, the client to say? And sort of working that through. Yeah. We're going to probably do more of it. Yeah. You've been in recruitment for 23 years, you've seen these cycles. If you went into another recruitment <coughs> company and they're having exactly the same problem, what would you tell them to do? Back themselves. <laughs> a lot of it. Yeah. Like, back themselves to make that decision, you're not going to get it. That far on, we have nothing signed, so we can always sort of work it back. Um, so I think a lot of it is just having that back to self, yeah. having the confidence in yourself to be able to, to do it. And me, and knowing I've got them knowing I've got their back mm. to do it. That's two minutes. Ten minutes. No, one more minute. Yeah, sure. So if, again, just in terms of our conversation today, seeing that there's obviously a fair bit of responsibility and coming back on you to send that clear message. I mean, what could you do differently now, acknowledging that 
going back into the office tomorrow. I think having a couple of people who are between me and them would certainly help, but the two, big two or three of them, that, that's their career path. So that's them building up towards that. So actually putting them in place would create potentially a different issue with regards to being able to grow their careers. So fixing it, or not fixing it, but having that as a solution potentially creates a completely different problem. And I'd rather the problem that I've got at the moment than that particular problem with that end up. Yeah, cool. And how confident are you that will meet the needs of, of those staff to try and change their mindset? I'm pretty confident over in time they'll get to where they need to. It's just I'll probably have to deal with the frustration for a little bit longer knowing that the, there's light at the there is light there at the end of the tunnel. It's just it's a normal growth. Okay. Practicing some patience. Yeah. It's a great point. It's always my strong point of patience. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey look, thanks very much. Hey. Hey. Um, I'm gonna draw a bit of a diagram sort of and, and, and distill a few things just in the essence of coaching. But what's a couple of things you picked up out of that? I'm not saying it's the best example of coaching here that would be um, you know, 10 minutes, but what's a couple of things you picked up in terms of style and, and, the, and the way it was done to sort of help shape your thinking about what coaching is? Open-ended questions. Sorry? Open-ended questions. Yeah, lots of open-ended questions, yeah. The coachee did most of the talking. The coachee did most of the talking, okay. Never gave an opinion. Never gave an opinion. Good. Mm. Mm. But the prison reality of what happened, just like just like all the comments. Great, great pick up. Fantastic. And that's really important. We'll come to that, yeah. Don't put any thoughts on the problems to solve them. Yeah. There's one other there's one other one. You've got most of them, but there's one other one there that, that, that we I spent a fair bit of time, probably half of it doing at the very beginning. Whether you had a uh, high breakdown in the session or in closing or anything. Yeah, yeah. Keep Even more than that. Confirm what I hear, but, but what was I trying to do by doing that with Andy? Reflecting back. Yeah, reflecting back. Defining, 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 defining the problem. And also what does it look like if it's fixed? Yeah, which, which is going which is going to sort of the other end of it sort of thing. But it's really important with coaching is to actually take the time to define the problem because when Andrew and I sat down, it started off being one thing, didn't it? And that, we actually worked out it was the mindset of the people. It wasn't a skill set by bringing other people in to train them. It was a mindset. It was maybe a bit more about his behaviour and him being able to release himself and, and thus put pressure on the people there. And so that's the, the coaching can never be successful if you don't have a really strong definition of the problem. Because you, you hear one thing and you just take that and you just go right off and you find out halfway through that that's actually not the problem at all. That's what they thought the problem was and it's actually taking the time to dig into it. So, does that make sense, Andrew, in terms of us doing it? The data was trying to deal with one of them at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, look, what I thought I'd do is just to give you a little bit of a, um, a, 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 a format of, of, sort of how coaching fits in sort of thing. And if we have time at the end, I, I might just demonstrate um, the uh, another element to coaching sort of around performance management. Just show you how easy it is um, to do it. But... We're just going to, there's two, um, I'm right-handed, but I'm going to be mainly using that board where most of my time will be, sort of thing. We're just going to divide it into two. So you've, you've got this model, it's called a TAPS model. And it's not mine. Um, academically, I know I've got a couple of academics here. I should be able to reference exactly where it came from. It eludes me because I've had it for quite a while. But it, it's called the TAPS model. It looks like this. I said, we'll use, most, we'll use this board for most of it. Okay, so this is... <coughs> North, south, east, and west. So down the bottom here, you've got tell. Okay, what's the opposite of the tell? Uh, ask. Okay, so ask is up the top. And then we've got over here, we've got problem. What's the opposite of problem? Solution. Solution. Thank you for working with me. Going beautifully so far. I don't need to use Mentimeter. It's great. <laughs> okay. So let's just work our way. Let's just work our way around. If you're, if you're constantly asking people about a problem, what sort of profession might you be in? If you're constantly asking people about a problem. Healthcare? Healthcare. Doctor. Doctor? doctor? Yeah, doctor? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
probably fair. It's probably actually it's probably a really never come up before. But it's actually a really really good observation. Yeah. What else? Diagnosing. Diagnosing. Yeah. So so oh, okay. so often usually when you're asking people about a problem you're doctor you're doing like a counsellor. You're asking people talk about tell me about your problem. 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 I'm a St Kilda supporter, I spend a lot of time with counsellors. <laughs> <laughs> Thousands of counsellors in South Dallas. Now, if you invite someone in, an individual, a company, or whatever, to tell you about a problem, what sort of what sort of role, what sort of, uh, in the company, what sort of people might they be? Consultant. Consultant. Okay, okay. cut three minutes off the talk. Uh, so, well, so, well, no. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, come in here, can you dig into that and tell us what's going on? So, we often, so we, we often employ consultants to tell us about problems, yeah? Now moving over to here, as I said, please, just a, a drawing in the middle. If we want people to tell us about solutions, what sort of person what, um, might you engage there? An expert. An expert, yep, an expert. <clears throat> what else? Mental. Mental. It's another two minutes off, this is going to be great. <laughs> so often we, we seek, and this is, I've purposely got this up here, we often engage mentors, and, and, and a mentoring relationship is usually um, a, a senior to a junior sort of thing. It has a hierarchy. Someone has more knowledge, more expertise. They're experts on, on certain things, and we're asking from their opinion, and we're prepared to listen because they are positioned as that. Yeah. So if we have, if we're asking people about solutions, we spend a lot of time asking about solutions. What might be that be? Great, thank you very much. <laughs> Going smoothly. Yeah. No one wanted to be Captain Obvious, I get it. Okay, right. Okay. So, coaching. And so, this is the important thing, I suppose. And, and just as we demonstrated um, with Andrew and myself, you know, you're, you're, you're pop, you, you, you've got to start by asking, defining the problem, but it's really about asking people about the solutions and getting them to come up with their own ideas. And why is that so important? This is the key to coaching. Why is it so important? with coaching that we focus so much on getting people to come up with their own solutions? Because they... Brilliant. So over here we get ownership. What else do we get? Motivation. Motivation. Why is it motivating? Because it's what? Empowering. It's empowering. It's their idea. We're not telling them what to do. And usually your own idea, you, you, you'll back it to death sort of thing, because it's your idea. But if someone else will tell you, you always find a good reason why, why it isn't a good idea, that, which is fair enough. You can't possibly know anything about it. So this is all combines for what? What are you really trying to do in coaching? Ownership, motivating, empowering. What are those things all spelled for the, the person who's being coached? Coaching is just about all those things, just trying to create energy. All those things are just trying to create energy for that person because they've got the ownership, they've got the motivation, they're empowering, so they've got the energy. You're not having to sort of stick a fork into them, you're not trying to sort of whip them, you don't have to do anything else. It's being driven by themselves, yeah? And so it unleashes so much more because all of a sudden they're taking all the initiative and, and they're doing it that way. Now, so coaching, as you saw with Andrew and I, You've got to start over here. So we start, we asked about the problem, okay? And then the person picked it up and said, very quickly, we anchor over here and say, what's the ideal solution? Okay, so and so what's the what what's the dream outcome? <coughs> and then the coaching is just helping build a path to doing it. Okay? None of it's mine, not my mine's to help define the problem as the coach, mine's to help say, what's your dream? That's what it is. Okay, so what are the things you can do to get closer to your dream? No advice. Now, that's the purest form of coaching. <coughs> Mentoring, contrasting with that, is when you tell someone what to do, who owns the idea? The mentor. Who has the energy for the idea? The mentor. It's far less empowering. It's needed, but it's far less empowering than, than actually coming arriving at it yourself. Make sense? So, there's a couple of great things that get in the way. There's this grey area here, and we call it mochi. 
<laughs> Which is what I do. Okay. And mulching is driven by another hack word. Do you? Congestions. <laughs> <laughs> What's a congestion? Have a guess. What's a congestion? And what's it sound like? We all do it all the time. Now, why is an open question? I'll come to why in a minute. Have you? Should you? Could you? Did you? Will you? It's your idea sneakily <laughs> masquerading as a question. It's a closed question and you either agree or you disagree with me. And do it that way. And we all, because of impatience and because we make sure we want to get, we want to impose ourselves on the conversation. When we start off, and even sometimes when we're in the middle of coaching, we, we sort of we get into those things here. And and we're going to talk a bit about EQ on Chris is going to talk a bit about EQ later on. But as soon as we get into this area, the threat sensation goes in our brain. Hang on, I'm being railroaded. Hang on, I'm I'm being corralled down a path where the coach wants me to, or the moach wants me to go. And this is, I mean, maybe in a couple of months I'll come back and talk a bit more about some of the neuroscience. But we are very alert to when someone is trying to steer us. Our threat sensation in our brain goes, hang on, this person has got an ulterior motive. This isn't genuine. They're actually pushing, they're pushing their own point here. They're pushing their own view. And your coaching relationship and your coaching success drops off a cliff. Make sense? Okay. So, someone said um, open question here before one of the things we demonstrated was open question. So, it, to be really, really, really good with the coaching, it's, it's leading with a lot of who and, and what questions um, because they're um, non threatening, except with the right tone, non threatening uh, open questions to actually gather information and to get the person talking because when that person's talking, they're the ones who are doing the thing. When you prefer something with why, what happens? What's, what's the question beginning with why, W-H-Y? Judgmental. Judgmental, yeah, judgmental's part. What else is it? Often it comes across intuitively in our brains. Yeah, justification and accusatory. And so when you ask a question that's why, and particularly if it's got a tone to it, again, your coaching relationship can be torn apart because all of a sudden the threat indicators go up and go, hang on, there's an accusatory thing going on here, I start getting defensive or I get on the attack. So to maintain a really strong coaching connection, it's important to be um, as, as open and honest, but also to, to tone down and make sure you're doing it with what we call genuine curiosity. So even if you can't think of a whole lot of great questions, if you're genuinely curious about something or someone, you'll be able to coach them because you invest the time to actually be genuinely interested in them. They'll read the body language and go, hey, this is someone who's really keen to me. I'll, 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 I'll happy to share a bit more here. And so that's when I'm talking to people about coaching. That's one of the, 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 the simple things about it is ask open questions and remain genuinely curious. And that will get you 80% of the way there without having to, you know, not the coaching training and do it that way. So look, I'll just... I know I'm speaking pretty quickly, it's a habit of mine, I get excited with these topics. Any questions just before we sort of, uh, we push on to um, the final part of it? Do you ever see reasons to go and do it from a perspective, or is it just solely the data coach? Good, it's a great question, Lockie. So when I first started out, the, the purest, I've, I've done a whole lot of coaching and accreditations and all the courses and things like that, and, and really when you're doing that sort of stuff, they are absolutely, as a discipline, slamming you about giving any advice or any answers and all the other things. Now, that's the purest, the absolute, if, if, if purity of coaching is over here about never venturing opinion, never doing anything else, the reality of coaching is probably somewhere back here. Because, have you, has everyone seen the, the, uh, the diagram you learn about? How long are we going to time for? Are you doing well, mate? Okay. Okay. Yeah. You've seen, you've seen the thing about um, uh, unconsciously incompetent, consciously, you've seen that diagram about how we, how we learn. 
haven't got time to probably delve into it. But there's a thing, yeah, if you're unconsciously incompetent, you don't know what you don't know, okay? You can't coach people if they don't know what they don't know. You can only coach people if they're consciously incompetent. They know that they don't know. So it, it, purity of coaching is when people are, um, are consciously incompetent. If they're consciously incompetent, you can, you've got to start telling them stuff. Um, and so people keep saying, oh, you can use coaching all the time. Well, you, you actually can't if they don't know what's going on. And sometimes they get to a blocker. So sometimes I might have heard something from Andrew and I might have gone, I've been in that situation, I've, do, I've been through that, I've lived through that, and, and, and <coughs> something I've, you know, I had in my world. I might, say, I might say to him, is it okay if I offer a suggestion? So again, you're remaining as non threatening as possible and you're asking permission. Not just saying, hey, this is what I reckon you should do. I'm just jamming it into him without it being invited. But I, I may have something to add. So the purity of coaching says no. The reality of coaching says there's going to be occasions where you might be able to actually offer something that's valuable, but it's got to be really limited. You, know, you don't want to go there very often in a coaching session. So the extension to that question is really defining where coaching role is required. You know, I said there is that just to play the devil's advocate, mm -hmm. you know, you, you could take a view, well, you know, I've just spent 15 minutes, I've got a problem, I've just spent 15 minutes talking to a bloke who didn't give me any answers, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so when, when do you know, as a coach, when that's the right tack? Yeah. And when do you know, as the problem with the first that actually you don't need coaching, you need, you need to talk to an expert, right? So it's to me, it's matching the coaching to the situation. Yep. I was trying to play that out in my own mind, that's actually not an easy thing to define. So how, how do you do that within an organisation? How, how do you match the person that needs coaching to the person that can give it? Okay, so what's your name? Pascal. Pascal, great, great, that was that brilliant. Two parts to it, okay? If I can answer it separately. The first part is, how do you know if your coaching is being successful? You see in the other person an aha moment where you sense the energy going up. That's when you've done your job as a coach because you've created some breakthrough, helped them create a breakthrough. If you, don't, if you haven't done that, your coaching hasn't probably had the, the impact it should, and that's what you're aiming for. If, if, if Andrew walks and goes, oh, he walks back up there and goes, Man, I've never thought of that bang. As a coach, I've, I've helped fulfill my role. But he's not answerable to me, but that's that's what I'm trying to help him get to. Yeah? The second part of your question, when do you know coaching is appropriate? If you are trying to get people to change, telling them what to do has about, according to the neuroscience, and guys down the front can talk a bit about emotional intelligence, has about a 15 to 20% impact on changing behaviour, telling people what to do. So if you are really trying to get someone to change, you're much better going into a coaching mode to get them to acknowledge and to, and to make the decisions going forward than telling them what to do. If the building's burning down, I'm not coaching people on what we're going to do. I'm, I'm saying, this is an emergency, get out, follow me or do whatever. So you've got to, I suppose you've got to modulate Pascal and sort of say, well, what am I trying to achieve here? Do I want this person to create their own energy and to pick it up and run with it and be really good? Or do I need to tell them because it's an emergency or we need to get this shit done quickly? Or I've got all the answers and we haven't got time. And it's usually a time thing. Does that sort of answer your question? Yeah, it's a bit of a judgment call. I, I disagree on the 20% thing. Usually when I try and tell the kids what to do, it's probably five to 10 <laughs> Thank you. Rule number two rules in coaching, can't coach your friends, can't coach your family, okay? You just, the relationship doesn't work. And I've tried. <laughs> and it goes something like this. Hey, um, what do you think about the state of the kitchen at the moment? The response is, Bob, Dad, don't try your coaching shit on us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so when, when you've, been like, you've been like that for 15 years, and all of a sudden you go into coaching mode, they go, I smell a rat. <laughs> Dad's trying to manipulate me. And coaching isn't about manipulation, okay? I just want to be really clear about that. So look, I, I thought I've got five minutes left. I have, um, so look, the only, um, the, the only thing I suppose I just want to emphasise on, on this um, is uh, coaching is too, uh, coaching can either be external person or internal, okay? 
there's, there's benefits for both, okay? External, a um, lot more confidential, uh, people can open up, but don't have the threat of sort of maybe being able to sort of say, I don't understand, or I don't know, and, and it's a safer spot to do that. Internal is, is really good and even more powerful because you get to observe people um, and you're not relying on their recollections. And that's why I suppose I wanted to share it with you today because this isn't about me fostering business for myself, but understanding for you from a coaching tool point of view, internal coaching your own staff um, and, and, that, and having that ability to do that unleashes all the power for them and you're with them constantly and you can see them and observe them so you can actually help them with some of the reflective pieces. And it doesn't have to be... We always think, our oh, coaching's got to be 45 minutes or an hour or whatever. We did 10 minutes, okay? We probably could have gone for another 15, but that might have been the end of it. But I wanted to show you, just demonstrate, finish off demonstrating an example. And this is going to have to be a role play. Um, so I'm just going to randomly pick someone. Jane, <laughs> I haven't met you before. Jane, come out here. It's just, and I just want you to work with me on this. So it's, it's a role play thing. But it's about coaching people in, in, in terms of performance, okay? So we're just going to pretend okay. in this example, Jane, don't take this personally, that, you're a, that you're, we're having a performance discussion, your performance hasn't been up to my expectations, yeah? Okay. <laughs> 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 I, I might well be. So, so we're, having a meet, we're having a meeting about your performance. So Jane, over the, over the last four weeks um, since you've been on this project, out of five, how would you rate your how would you rate your performance? Five. You'd give it a five? Yeah, okay. Well. okay. So five out of five. Yeah. You're doing fantastically. Yeah. So just uh, help me understand, when, when you say a five out of five, what's a five out of five performance mean in your role? It means that you've given me, you're, you have certain expectations and yep. I feel I've gone above them. Yeah, okay. Anything mm -hmm. else that would, would mean a five out of five in terms of the role? Oh, I think I may have done it. Better than you suggested. So Jane, based based on that, you've given yourself a five, yeah, yeah. And, and, and 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 you know we're having this conversation about your performance. Where do you think I might have rated you on a scale of one to five? Well, if you're mentored you properly, probably one. Yeah, okay. Would you be surprised to know that I've only got you about a three? Oh, good. Yeah, okay. yeah, I thought they'd done really well. So what am I not seeing about the, the role that you're giving yourself a five out of five for? I don't think you're appreciating <laughs> that I've come from, from this position mm. and I've been able to get up here. Yeah. I, think, I don't think you appreciate how far I've gone and yeah. how much I've put into this. Fantastic. Mm. So, so we both can align in the future about how your performance is. What do you reckon you might need to do to let me understand and get inside that so you, I can see you as a five out of five. Okay, well, I think you need to have a handle on what I'm doing mm -hmm. earlier yeah. rather than after the event saying yeah. how do you rate yourself. So yeah. I would have liked sort of a bit of mentoring there. If you are looking in and thinking, oh, I think she should, uh, you know, could do something better yeah. or in a different way, then I'm giving you permission to step in any time because I want to be a five out of five, but if yep. I don't know I'm being that, yep. then yeah, it's hard to do. Fantastic. So, so what I'm hearing from you then is if, if I can make the effort to come in, you'll help, you'll help work with me and we can actually work a bit more closely together. Absolutely. So I can understand why you're giving yourself a five out of five, but I'm only saying that for a year. Absolutely. So when can we start doing that? As soon as possible. Fantastic. <laughs> Role play, I've done it a number of times. I mean, yeah. you, you can you, people can say a five, and, and, and a lot of people you'll get in the workforce will actually do that. They'll say, I'm gonna I'm gonna see this boss off, I'm gonna I'm gonna call them five. So you've got to be ready for that and, and don't argue with them. Because the point is even when you're coaching people, you don't want to get I, I don't want to be arguing with you. I just want I want you to understand and suggest where you think it might be and all the other things. Now, if you'd said a four, I wouldn't have gone to where you think I score it, because it doesn't matter. I would have said, okay, four. So what's a five out of five look like? Okay, so how could you get yourself from a four to a five? And again, it could be a 10 minute conversation, but that's what the element of coaching is about. Not me telling you, Jane, what you should do. And again, I, you know, I think I pretty much did it there, but it's getting you to suggest what the solutions are to get to a five out of five. You've given yourself, a, let's say you've given yourself a four. I'm saying, okay, what's a five out of five look like? What can you do to get to a five out of five? And again, you have the ownership, the motivation. I'm empowering you to do whatever it is, unless I vehemently disagree with you. 
and hopefully the energy goes with you and so you're much more likely to follow it through. Does that make sense mm -hmm. from coaching? So it doesn't have to be hours of coaching, it can be sh shorter, smaller snippets of it, but as long as I suppose you, you, know, you stay with the basic principle about it's about asking really good questions, remaining, remaining genuinely curious and not imposing yourself and not sort of wedging people with what you think it is. That will unleash an immense amount of potential in your people, I can assure you. Uh, and they will feel valued and they will hopefully pick up and carry you in the business for the next year. That's, uh, that's it for... Uh, oh, no.